And there's the bell. And here we go. This is the type of battle that you can show someone who's new to our brand of entertainment and say, this is what WWE's all about. Oh, a knee right to the face. That knee is a lethal weapon. Close quarters. Ooh. Oh, oh, this is what's this going to be? We'll flap Jack. What a stomp. Good grief. Impact and a pin attempt. No trouble getting out of that one. Too soon. Hooked up. Great power. Inverted suplex. The showstopper. Beginning to look bad for her here. She's in there with some stiff competition tonight. If you're worried about her now, you haven't seen many of her matches. She can withstand so much more punishment than this. I've seen some unique offenses over the years, Byron, but perhaps the most unique thing I've ever seen is when Bianca whips her opponents with her own hair. I have never seen anything like it, Michael. But I'll tell you what. If I was to give advice to anyone facing Bianca, it would be to turn the tables against her. Go ahead and whip her with her own hair. To your point about Bianca's hair, Byron, I do think it's long enough that an opponent could likely use it as a weapon as well. Nope, that won't work. Grabbing an opponent's hair can lead to a disqualification. Besides, everybody knows the best way to prevent Bianca from using her hair is to cut it off, a la Brutus the Barber Beefcake. I gotta say, guys, Bianca Belair has wasted little time making a name for herself. I mean, from the minute she walked in the door, the entire women's division stood up and took notice. Thinking about a submission here, Case. Oh. As Byron mentioned, Bianca Belair's impact has been immediate. From her very first match in the 2017 May Young Classic. And the fight must go on. Nice kick out. Ladies and gentlemen, by now I'm sure you've heard Bianca Belair describe herself as the EST of NXT. Corey. What exactly does that mean? I'll break it down for you, Michael Cole. It simply means that Bianca Belair is the strongest, the fastest, the smartest, and the baddest around. Oh, man, she's rolling now. Bianca Belair, big move coming. Corey Dane, oh, victory is on the horizon. Bianca Belair made... Here's Bianca Belair into the quick cover. No kicks out in time. Just needs to do more damage. Bianca Belair, big move coming. She might have it. Beautiful technique. This one's over, guys. Look at this. Real quick reminder, guys. There are no disqualifications and no countouts in this one. Anything is legal. Oh. And there are enough weapons under the ring to fill an armory. She is on fire! As Corey mentioned, there's a treasure trove of weapons under the ring. 
Everything from kendo sticks to steel chairs to fire extinguishers. If you can think about it, it's probably under there. And when that's the case, it's not a matter of if you're going to get hurt. It's a matter of how badly you're going to get hurt. And no luck against Bianca Belair there. You gotta believe this one's over. She's calling for it. Ladies and gentlemen, by now I'm sure you've heard Bianca Belair describe herself as the EST of NXT. Corey, what exactly does that mean? I'll break it down for you, Michael Cole. It simply means that Bianca... She's clearly not getting paid by the hour. Kick out at two. Oh, that may have been a slow count. I'm just as shocked as everyone else, Cole. Oh, ho, ho. gosh. Whoa, whoa, Ronaldo. Double underhook applied. Up and down. Slam, slam. Free fall. Corey, thank you for breaking down exactly what it means when Bianca Belair says she is the ist of NXT. But don't you think Bianca has a bit of an overinflated ego for somebody relatively new to the scene? Absolutely not, Saxton. Just ask top NXT stars like Candice LeRae or Lacey Evans if it was Belair's. She goes for the cover. True testament to grit. Oh, that was close. Oh, nasty impact. You can see the confidence just beaming from her right now. This might be the one that ends it. This might be it. Oh, my. I bet you feel foolish riding her off now. The first one was vicious, but somehow this one was even more devastating. Final driver! Game, set, match, this one is over. Unbelievable. This singles match is over.
you can feel the electricity running through this arena. This is going to be some battle, one-on-one, -on -one, wow. mano a mano. There he goes, crashing to the floor. The, oh, look at what's coming! Again! That's two! And perhaps a trifecta? Incredible impact! Slam! As we've seen in the past, Extreme Rules matches create a type of hysteria that's difficult to describe, even more difficult to contain. I'd have to agree with what Byron's saying. When you've got action taking place all over the arena, complete with every weapon imaginable, it's not easy to keep up. Well, try, Cole. That's what you're getting paid for, isn't it? Jarring impact. If you ask me, guys, matches like this where there are essentially no rules are one giant free-for-all where absolutely anything can happen. Nailed it. Scoop slam! I like the way you describe this match, Byron. It's one giant free-for-all. And while it's exciting to watch, it's absolute torture on these superstars. It is, Cole. And unfortunately, matches like this usually result in injury. Sometimes serious injury. Stomp. Good grief. In matches like this, guys, you learn very quickly which superstars have what it takes to truly... Uh-oh. The slam. That should do it. Let me tell you, the human body was not meant to be slammed like that. Looking for the exclamation point. Ooh, what impact. This one is over. Regarding Corey's point about superstars having what it takes to get extreme, I would argue that every superstar in the locker room possesses a mean streak. Yeah, but not all mean streaks are created equal, Michael. But I'd say there's only a select few who can turn their mean streaks all the way up to the most extreme level. When it comes to matches like this, I'd say the more innovative a superstar is when it comes to offense, the better chance they have of victory. As Byron mentioned, innovation certainly is a key in a match like this. A competitor can't be adverse to taking action outside the ring. By no means is this your traditional contest. No, it's not, Cole, but at the same time, you still win this match the old-fashioned way by pinfall or submission. Bringing it back into the ring. Now with complete control. <laughs> What's gonna happen now? Oh, here we go.
Look out here. Backbreaker flawlessly executed. Caught off guard. This could be huge. Oh, using the knee as a weapon. This could be dangerous. Big move coming. Watch out here. Elbow drop. Here we go. This might be big. Look out here. This could be big. Really a back suit. We've got a cover. Too close for cover. Wow. Oh, here we go. Going for both. This could be it. Guys, you never know what you're going to see in a match like this. And if you need proof of that, just go back to watch Daniel Bryan versus Kane from Extreme Rules 2014. As Corey mentioned, Daniel Bryan versus Kane in 2014 provided scenes we never thought we'd see. Most notably for me was Bryan carrying Kane back to the ring via a forklift. That's right out there, Michael, but let's not forget that was also the match where Kane went through a flaming table. Of course, Extreme Rules matches have resulted in some gruesome moments over the years, and perhaps none was more gruesome than in 2012 when Brock Lesnar busted John Cena open following a vicious attack. Ooh, nobody controls the pace of a match quite like this guy. Uh-oh. A side slam. That's how you put an exclamation point on the end of a match, guys. Did you see the impact on that? Wow! As Byron mentioned, Lesnar's attack on Cena in 2012 was without question gruesome. And furthermore, I don't think I've ever seen John Cena looking for the win. Nailed it. This one's over. Penny predicament. There's the pinfall and the victory.